So we kind of need from this church, from the church ladies, some uh, desserts or salads to be able to take to that, to donate for that cause. And so that's, again, 4 o'clock on Sunday, March 5th. And we would really like for you to turn it kind of a community event. Yes, Sharon. I would like to thank everyone for prayers, for concerns, and helping me. It has been such a joy in my heart. And I would also like to tell the congregation that the more memorial money for Fred came to around three thousand oh dollars. So I want to thank everyone. You're all so blessed to me, and uh, I'm I'm just very grateful. So I will put it in the offering plate today. All right, very good. Uh, and we are just so very thankful that you're able to be with us in church today, Sherry. <laughs> And I know you're preacher, Suzanne, so we'll give you, I know she'll give you special dispensation for that. <laughs> She's mothered me, and that's good. So. Very good. Any other announcements, joys, or concerns? Yes, Marlis?
suspicion. For God is still speaking. Look. For God is still present. Worship. For God is in our midst. Let us pray together. God.
us pray. Lord God, you have given us so many great blessings and resources and gifts in this life. Lord, may we give uh, as a joyful and cheerful gift. Because we know you love a cheerful gift, Lord. We pray this in your Son's name. So just for a minute 
here, I would like for you all to just put yourselves in the place of these disciples. Peter, James, and John. I'm guessing these guys uh, were sleeping soundly and warm and cozy. And then here comes Jesus along. And he shakes them a little bit. He says, uh, maybe about three in the morning. Uh, shakes them and says, hey, get up. Get up. Come on. Let's go. I can just hear myself. Where are we going at this hour? <laughs> well, we're going to go on top of the mountain to pray. Couldn't we pray from here? <laughs> You know, that's, that would be my take, is, do we really have to get out where it's cold, it's warm in here, and go climb a mountain in the dark? Now, Becky had a, a question that I can't answer. I wonder if they had lanterns, or if they just walked up this mountainside in the dark. I don't know. Kind of makes you wonder, though. How did they know how and where they were going? So, they do what Jesus asks them to do. And I would guess that there's not much being said on this trek up the side of the mountain. So when they get to the special spot that Jesus wants them to come to, then all of a sudden, Jesus is what's described in the scriptures as transfigured. He is illumined. Uh, I am guessing that he is suspended in midair with his arms stretched out and stretched forth. And he becomes as white and shining as the sun. His clothes take on a different uh, you know, a, a different visualization. And his skin, his face is, is illumined and bright and, and white as the shining sun. And then comes two more people. One right alongside Jesus. Moses on one side and Elijah on the other side. And they are all talking with one another. Moses, Elijah... And Jesus, and they're all there talking with one another. And Peter, he is, I'm guessing he is freaked out by all of this. And he feels like that here is an unusual encounter with God. And Peter feels like, hey, I need to be doing something. I need to act. I've got to I've got to do something. So Jesus, if it's okay with you, I'll set up three tents. One for you, and one for Elijah, and one for Moses. Now mind you, this is at the time when they, uh, in Jewish tradition, they call the Festival of Booths. <coughs> where, and I can't really tell you what that's all about. Uh, but it would be a great thing for you to go uh, back and Google and look up and find out what the Festival of Booths is all about. So anyway, Peter, he feels like he's got to be doing this. Well, it falls on deaf ears because right in the middle of that, God interrupts. And he says to the whole bunch, this is my beloved son. I'm well pleased with him and you need to listen to him. And so Peter, James, and John, in this encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, are on their knees with their heads bowed down to the earth, and they are praying. And then just as fast as it uh, started, it's over with. And it's calm. Jesus puts his hand on it. So don't be afraid. Just, let's just go down, back down the mountain. But be quiet. Let's not talk. And when you get down there, let's not speak about this because 
people are just not going to understand. Wow, wouldn't you love to have been there to have seen all this? To me, this was a vision. This was a, a, a vision, and Jesus even says, calls it a vision for Peter, James, and John. I think it was a vision of what? Of who God is in the personhood of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus was all human, but he was all God, he was all divine. They got to see, I mean, they were with him all the time. They knew what his human side uh, was like. But they got to see Jesus as divine. They got to see this vision. I would venture to say their lives were forever changed. Whatever picture they had had of God, uh, I think that had to have been changed because they got to see Jesus as God. I'm reminded here of some of the events that have been happening down in Wilmore, Kentucky at the Asbury College. Now, uh, I talked to you about this at Asbury University. I talked to you a little bit about this last week. And uh, what's going on down there is revival. Just talking to Judd. And Judd, by the way, is a, a graduate of Asbury University. Seminary. Seminary, I'm sorry. I wasn't bringing up Asbury College. Asbury Seminary, yeah. Anyway. But uh, this is sort of a renewal time. And this is. I mean, there are thousands of people converging on uh, this little town in Kentucky. It's not far from Lexington, but Wilmore, Kentucky. And this is a renewal time, mainly led by young people. Uh, and so, just to give you a little bit of a glimpse as to what is happening, I think Jessica is going to try to put this on the screen for just a minute or two, uh, and if she can kind of get that going. So take a listen.
is just a, a little glimpse of what's been going on for 10, 12 days straight round the clock. And uh, this is revival, renewal that's led by young people that are uh, hungry for God. I sense there's something going on here uh, with, with people all across the world. There's revivals that are breaking out all in different countries. In Uganda, there's a big revival breaking out. There is this hunger right now for people to get a glimpse of what heaven is like. For people to come back to God. These young people, there's reports of, of healings and, uh, and repentance and uh, these young people praying for one another. And you know the thing is about this, that this spontaneously sparked just from a young preacher. I don't know if he was a campus preacher or if he was a student preacher that had a chapel service. He gave a message on uh, and ended it with, God, revive us by your love. And I think he was preaching out of Romans 12. Well, there were some young people that stayed at the altar. And then before long, there were more young people. And then before long, there was several hundred people there in Hughes Chapel at Asbury University. And it's just gone <coughs> on and on and on. I believe, and one of the reasons I believe this is a true work of the Holy Spirit is there are no big name preachers that are there. Mm -hmm. there, there are no uh, big name music groups there. You know, Joel Osteen is not there. And uh, Amy Grant is not there. It's these young people that are there. And people are coming from all over the world to Wilmore, Kentucky, of all places, where a man by the name of John Wesley Hughes started Asbury University, Asbury College, actually, in 1890, and he was an evangelist. And that university was birthed out of revival. And now, 50 years ago, they had the same type of revival there at Asbury. It was Asbury College then, too. And now, revival is broken out again. These young people are hungry for God. They want to see a glimpse of what heaven is like. They want to see, they, they want to come back to God. So, out of all this, folks, We've all had discussions of what's happening to our young people. And I've heard our young people, our millennials and Gen Zs, are going to hell in a handbasket. Well, that's not true. It's not true. They're coming to God. And here is living proof of it. Just like Peter, James, and John got down on their knees and hands before God, and God revealed himself to them through Jesus. The same thing is happening now in Wilmore, Kentucky. And these kids in Wilmore, they're leaving and they're taking, I mean, they've been coming in by the busloads from places like the University of Kentucky. And, and then they're going back and they're taking revival back to their campus. So what's this all got to do with us here today? Well, I'm not suggesting that we all make a pilgrimage to Wilmore, Kentucky. But I am suggesting that here, before Lent, that we get down on our hands and knees. And you can do this in your own prayer closet. Or if you want to, these altars are always open, which is our Methodist tradition. Altars are always there. But open yourself. Open yourself to the spirit of the living God to do uh, a miracle work 
to bring renewal, to bring revival to us. Uh, and it just takes a little spark. It just takes a little spark. And we each can experience what these young people are experiencing in Wilmore, Kentucky. We can experience what Peter, James, and John experienced on that cold, dark morning. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final hymn is We Fall Down. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Here it is. Our final hymn is We Fall Down, and the lyrics are on the screen. <laughs> Thank you.